Hello YouTube, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Hopefully you're all having amazing creative days. Today we're gonna to be talking about dynamic range. And since most of my subscribers are Canon shooters, we're gonna be talking about how dynamic range works differently on Canon cameras from other cameras and how you can take advantage of that to get the best dynamic range out of your shots. Because a lot of people, they're just out pushing buttons, taking shots, but they don't really know how to get the best dynamic range out of a Canon camera. So that's what we're gonna to learn today. So stick around if that's something you're into. Let's get into it. When it comes to capturing stunning photographs, understanding dynamic range is crucial. Modern cameras equipped with advanced tech offer great dynamic range, enabling photographers to capture a wide range of tones in their images. By the time you're finished watching this video, you'll know five tricks to get the best dynamic range out of your Canon camera, and you'll be confident heading out the door in any lighting condition that you know how to get the right exposure. Dynamic range refers to the ability of a camera to capture a full range of tones from the darkest shadows to the brightest highlights. It measures the difference between the darkest and brightest areas you can record in an image. Dynamic range is measured in stops, with each stop representing a doubling or halving in the amount of light. A higher dynamic range means that the camera can capture a wider range of tonal values resulting in more details and a more balanced image. A higher dynamic range also provides photographers with more flexibility when it comes to editing a photo. Now let's talk about the one mistake a lot of creators make when shooting with Canon cameras. I see photographers make this mistake. I see a lot of YouTubers who review Canon cameras against other brands make this mistake. So let's talk about what you can do to get the most dynamic range out of your Canon cameras and why Canon cameras are different from other brands. So let's get into it. Okay, so there's two things to keep in mind here. The first thing is, is that out of all the big brand camera manufacturers, Canon is the only one to make their own image sensors. And the second thing to keep in mind here is that because they make their own image sensors, their sensors act differently than all the other sensors on the market. So for example, a Sony sensor will have dynamic range on the light side, on the highlights and in the shadows whereas Canon sensors have most of their dynamic range in the shadows. So very little dynamic range in the highlights, a lot in the shadows. Now, what does that all mean when it comes to practical use? It means that if you want to shoot in high contrast scenes and preserve as much detail as possible to bring back in post-production, you have to expose for the highlights. The trick to getting the most dynamic range out of your Canon camera is to make sure that highlights are exposed properly, preventing blowouts and then you can recover all the details in the shadows in post-processing. As a general rule, when it comes to shooting with Canon cameras, you always wanna underexpose just a little bit to ensure that you can correct the exposure properly in post. All right, so let's tie it all together on this chart. We'll oversimplify things. So if you're shooting a normal scene, what you wanna do is expose for the midtones, and you'll get a correctly exposed shot. But if you're shooting a high contrast shot, what you wanna do is expose for the highlights and then bring back the shadows in post, and that is it. That's how you get the correct exposure. And hopefully that knowledge helps you and makes you a better photographer. All right, so now that you understand how Canon's dynamic range is different from other cameras, let's talk about how you can take advantage of that knowledge and get the most dynamic range out of your camera. All right, so trick number one, expose for the brightest part of your image, which is usually the sky, or in my case, I shoot a lot of weddings and the bride is always in a white dress, and that makes it so difficult because the groom is always in a black tux, bride's in a white dress, that is a lot of contrast. You need a lot of dynamic range to get that. So what you wanna do is get your exposure from the brightest part of your image. My situation, the white dress. Now for that, what you wanna do is spot metering. So set your camera to spot metering, get the exposure on the dress or whatever's lightest, and then Exposure lock to hold it, refocus, compose your shot, take the shot, and you're done. Now that's an old trick from the DSLR days. Now you get the luxury of seeing your exposure on the screen. Back in the day, we couldn't do that, but it's a good trick to know anyway. Might as well master your craft and learn how to use your camera properly so you don't have to rely on the screen all the time. So spot metering, expose for the highlight. That's trick number one. All right, the second thing you can do is turn on your highlight tone priority. So you have highlight tone priority and you have highlight tone priority enhanced in your menu. Awesome features, I keep it on all the time in my cameras. And what that does is it sort of changes the way your camera processes information coming from the highlights of your image. So it'll try and preserve textures and tones in the highlights, which is perfect because the dynamic range in Canon cameras will preserve all the detail in the shadows. So you're kind of getting a little extra dynamic range by turning that on. So definitely turn that on. 
The one caveat with that setting is it'll prevent you from using an ISO lower than 200. So if you want to shoot at 100 or 50 or anything like that, you won't be able to while well, highlight tone priority is on, but hey, not a big deal. All right, trick number three is use your histogram. Now, have you ever heard the term exposed to the left? What that means is darken your image a little bit because on your histogram, if you go left, I guess this would be your left on your view, left would be darker, right would be brighter. So if your histogram has too much information or too much, too many spikes on the right side, chances are you're blowing out. And if it's all the way to the right, you're definitely blowing out. But if you bring it back to the left a little bit, it's a little bit darker. So trick number three is use your histogram to get the correct exposure, especially in tricky situations where there's a lot of contrast in your shot. All right, number four, and here's another trick from the old DSLR days, is set your camera's exposure compensation to minus one, and then set your LCD or screen brightness to plus one to compensate for that. So when you look at the screen, everything looks properly exposed, but in actuality, you're shooting at one stop below the correct exposure, which allows you to preserve details and highlights and prevent clipping and blows and things like that. So if you're shooting outdoor weddings or people on the beach, outdoor stuff, that would be a good trick to employ Number five is use filters. Put a filter on the front of your camera. Most professionals always shoot with filters on their cameras. And what you want is a filter that'll reduce the intensity of the light coming into the camera. So you want an ND filter, a graduated ND filter, a variable ND filter, or even a polarizer will slightly cut the amount of light coming into your camera. So at the very least, you should always just keep a polarizer on your uh, camera just to cut the amount of light coming in. And those are great ways to preserve the highlights. Now, if you're shooting landscape photography, a great trick is to use a graduated ND filter because the sky is always super bright and you want to make sure that your trees and whatever the landscape is, is not overexposed. So you use a graduated ND filter to knock some of the light out of the sky and it changes your exposure, it gives you more dynamic range as you're shooting. And then of course you can bring back all the darks in post. So that's a trick, definitely use filters. And when it comes to filters, you definitely want to invest in good quality filters. You have your really good quality filters like B plus W, which are crazy expensive. And then you have your cheap stuff, which is hit or miss. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. And I found a brand called Nisi, which is actually really good. Their prices are fair and their filter quality and glass quality is really good. So value for money is spot on. I strongly recommend them. I'll put some links down below in the description if you want to go check them out. But like a VND, a polarizer, some NDs and stuff like that from Nisi, a fantastic investment if you're looking to invest in some filters to take with you as your photography career takes off. All right. And now you know, and knowing is half the battle. Understanding how your camera captures dynamic range is vital to getting a correct exposure, especially in tricky situations. And now you know how to do it. You have the knowing, so definitely get out there and create some interesting shots. Try and push the envelope in terms of your photography skills. Try and shoot situations that you otherwise might have tried to avoid, like shoot at high noon or shoot in high contrast situations and create some beautiful shots and impress your friends on social media. Get those thumbs up, get those likes. And if you want to follow me on social media, there's my Instagram link down below. Come check me out. And with that being said, this video is over. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you found that useful. If you did, definitely give me a thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out and keep shooting.